Welcome to the Using Slick Edit module. Here you will learn how Slick Edit provides capabilities that surpass most common mainframe programming language editors. Slick Edit is called an intelligent editor. A simple mapping of the human brain reveals a corresponding area just behind the frontal lobe. We see here that Slick Edit comes highly recommended. The included Slick Edit documentation is very thorough. You are encouraged to review the Quick Start for a Primary User Preference settings and the most common customization options. At this point, we will have a closer look at two of the features most often used when editing COBOL source code, hovering over a program variable, and type ahead when entering new lines of code. We begin by acquainting you with the role played by file extensions when using Slick Edit. There are rules that govern the actions taken by Slick Edit. We will first have a look at the default rules. Under Configure on the menu bar, we choose ZOS File Extension Mapping Editor. We expand the defaults and the ZOS file mappings to see the current settings. At the top, we see that mainframe files ending with .asm and file names including a .asm node all are assigned the .asm390 file extension under the Host Explorer. Similarly, mainframe file names ending with .cobol and containing a .cobol node all are assigned the .cbl file extension. This is the file extension that governs the slick edit interface when editing a given data set. As an example, if the mainframe dataset name is userid.abc.cobol.xyz, then the host explorer will assign .cbl as the file extension. The assistance provided by Slick Edit goes beyond mainframe editors that provide assistance based on the file name. Here we will look at what does and does not happen when using Slick Edit with COBOL source code. In this case, the file name used does not match any of the patterns in the list of defaults. Opening an edit session on a member, we see that this file has been assigned the .data file extension. Scrolling down to working storage, we locate the program variable emp line count. Finding this variable used in the procedure division, we discover that hovering the cursor over the variable does nothing, and it should when editing COBOL source code. We now add a blank line to insert new code. The intent is to insert a move statement, so we type the letter M. A dialog box appears displaying a list of word candidates. This is the basic type ahead feature. Adding the letter O advances the list alphabetically. Note that Slick Edit has parsed the code determined it to be COBOL, and added a skeleton move statement to the list. Choosing that adds the move statement to the new line and adds a dialog box allowing selection of the source program variable. Let's look at the effects of changing the file extension. 
Since both members of this PDS contain COBOL code, the new file extension will be assigned at the dataset level. It can be assigned at the member level if necessary. We highlight the dataset name, right click to display the context menu, then choose Assign File Extension. When the Assign File Extension dialog box appears, we choose .cbl from the drop-down list, then Assign. The confirmation message appears in the same box and we click on Done. Entering edit sessions on both members confirms that applying the file extension at the dataset level affects all members. Back in the full program member, we locate the variable found earlier. Now, when hovering the cursor over the variable where it is used in the procedure division, we see that Slick Edit displays a pop-up window with information about the variable. A single click on the green arrow scrolls the display to the definition of the variable. This concludes this module. Thank you.